Everyone, welcome to Mission Inspired, a CPG chat. I'm your host, Rusty Jones, co-founder of Hello Water. Today's episode, we have the talented John Hopkins, CEO and founder of Five Way Foods. John, welcome to the show. How are you doing? Great, Rusty. Thanks for having me on. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for joining. Uh, as you can tell, the podcast is called Mission Inspired. So uh, really, the thought of that is I've been inspired to create a brand and, uh, you know, just like raising a kid, you know, it takes a village, um, you know, and it, there's a mission there. Keep a keep the kid alive. That helps. But make sure he's nourished and has the next generation things he needs. Um, and then the same with the uh, same with you know, entrepreneurship and branding. So I would love to hear more about your story and how um, Five Way Foods came to um, existence and what inspired you to do this and what inspires you to keep going. Sure. Yeah. Happy to share my story. So uh, similar with uh, when you mentioned kids, uh, what, what really got me started it was a long time ago when we had, uh, my wife and I had our second son. He was born with food allergies so it really um, changed when she started eating solid food. It, it changed our whole family um, uh, diet and and how we uh, went to the supermarket and bought food. So he was allergic to nuts and dairy and a couple other things. Um, thankfully, over the years, he, he uh, grew out of most of the food allergies. But it really um, opened our eyes up to different foods, and and we had some some um, when he was very young some some allergic uh, experiences with him. So uh, on that, uh, there was one time when he had some some soup that we had purchased in the store, and had allergic reaction to it. And we learned that there can be potentially dairy and like whey in soup that's not listed as an ingredient. So it got me started to make uh, soup at home. And when you make soup at home, you need broth. So it got me on making uh, broth. When I would go to the supermarket, I really didn't, you know, the store bought products weren't weren't really nutritious. So uh, over the years, um, I would make it and really, you know, couldn't couldn't go in the the store to buy it unless I really had to. But uh, uh, so it got me started making uh, bone broth at home. And then in 2015, um, decided just on a career wise, I was spent my career in tech to really look at uh, transitioning my career into, into doing some CPG food and kind of follow my foodie mission uh, that I enjoyed making food at home and, and really thought of bone broth, believe it or not, um, as a product that could be really um, disruptive. So, um, so that got me started looking at ways of basically commercializing what I was making at home and, um, and really you know, what I look to do is having a really healthy, nutritious broth that would simmer for a long time that could be found in the supermarket. Um, the other kind of mission thing was really nutrient dense that had the broth would have a lot of collagen, which is what you get um, uh, when you simmer bones for a long time is nutrients like collagen. And um, you know, really got me thinking, like, how can we bring a product that both would be used for cooking and drinking? and um, yeah, so I, in 2016, started the company and wanted to, having my background in tech, wanted to make sure that I wasn't crazy. So uh, I started going to farmer's markets with the product as my beta test, you know, going to having people try it, um, see if they liked it, see if they liked the packaging, the ingredients, the flavor, all, all of that, and, and did that for about nine months. And really got a ton of feedback from from folks, and the kind of premise for the product was clean label, uh, drinkable, refrigerated uh, broth. And we started with chicken and veggie, um, chicken bone broth and and veggie broth. So um, uh, did that, and um, after that period of time, people were like, "Where can we get the product?" Uh, we don't, we don't really love it and had made a career decision in 2017 to decide to jump in full time and do it, um, you know, do it as a full time job. Wow. Great story. I love it. Uh, you, it's amazing how many entrepreneurs and products come from farmer's markets. You know, we, my office is down by the farmer's market and I loved walking down and just seeing the barbecue sauces or the hot sauces or the bone broths or, you know, the next vegan thing. And it really is, you, you don't really know 
where to go and, and get the uh, feedback right away. But these farmer markets are are great for that. What was the, you know, obviously you probably did that for, I think you said nine months, but what was that aha moment? Was it just consistency feedback? Oh, this is amazing. I love it. You should sell this in stores. Or was it, you know, one testimony or two that was like, I've got to have something like this. I, you know, I have similar issues. Uh, right. So yeah, the aha moment was actually the first farmer's market that I went to. Uh, my expectation was I would sell a couple of bottles, you know, and in fact, um, we, we were making this product. I was making it in a very small commercial kitchen and I went to pick up the inventory and I was leaving. And the, one of the other people in the kitchen said, is that all you're bringing? I think I had like six bottles. I said, yes. <laughs> and uh, she said, you know, you know, you should bring everything because you, you know, you can always bring it back and you can, you know, you might sell it. I'm like, I don't really think I'm going to sell very much of it. And that first day I saw, I went back and I actually took her advice and I brought all the bottles. I think I had 25 or 30 bottles of product uh, that we had made and, you know, with kind of the homemade labels and all of that and brought it to the, you know, all the inventory that, that we, that I had to the market and sold it all. Um, yeah, and actually it was not a, it was kind of a rainyish kind of day. It was kind of like, you know, not the, the best day I guess they've had in, in volume, but anyway, I was, that was the aha moment and really continued on like that. It was really people would taste it and really enjoy it. And, um, you know, I felt I was onto something, you know, from that, from that day, you know, that was that. You know, it was probably if I only sold one or two, it probably would have validated maybe I wasn't really on to something. But I guess from a business point, you know, farmers markets are great to test. You know, it's a low threshold to get in. Uh, you know, and I think secondly, because it's an informal environment, people are very friendly. They're willing to come up to you, share you know their experiences, more you know whether you wanted to hear it or not, you hear it. And then I think um, you know you can use that to to kind of you know, fine tune the product. And that's, and so I, I made a commitment that I was going to do these different farmers markets over that period of time, just to get that sense, to make sure that, you know, everything that we were doing was, was uh, repeatable. Very nice. So farmers market next step, you know, obviously I'm in the beverage business with you understanding, then you got to create a brand and then you've got to, you know, find the right packaging. And oh, by the way, I'm going to put this in glass and it's not the, uh, lightest thing to ship if I'm going to ship it and, and I got to store it somewhere because it's refrigerated. What were, you know, was, was you just checking off the list to get to that, that those next steps or what, I, if you're like us, we skipped a couple of steps and then it was like, oops, we got to go back and do this one and then figured it out. So what was right. the process? Yes. To I, get think the I, I, I didn't, you know, the good thing is I didn't know that I was checking off the hardest list of things to do. So it was glass, bo it was glass bottles, it's refrigerated. Um, and so when, you know, when people go down the aisle to buy broth, they typically go, you know, center, center store, it's where it is, you know, aisle seven or whatever. And you go down there and there's, you know, cartons of it. So we're glass. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, some of it I knew and I had some, you know, really great mentors and people that were helping guiding the brands. Um, and I, I wanted, you know, from the farmer's markets knew that, you know, bone broth was kind of front and center on the label. So that's, it's always been there on the label. I think, um, you know, from the nutrition point of view, we really knew that people wanted the, the nutritional value. So that was another thing to put on the label and we brand around that. And I think not coming from CPG, there was a lot of things I didn't know, um, which was like one of the things is selling it on the web. So back in 2017, when we when I jumped in full time, was from almost from the beginning, we want to sell on our website and ship it around the country, which was somewhat, I, I, you know, surprisingly, not a lot of brands were doing at that time, you know, especially emerging brands. So that was something. Um, and then, you know, I'm a kind of tech guy and I wanted the data of who was buying the product. And I would remember, you know, like Pepsi doesn't know who you are. And I'd go to these conferences and want to, you know, talk about that. And people would look at me like I had three heads. Like, why do you need that? You know, you want to go in the store, you want to, you know, get the spins data. And I'm like, well, no, I want to know who's buying it, you know, the individual. So things I did in the beginning, I think really helped 
put the foundation, you know, so we did that, you know, had a Shopify site really early on, um, collecting data, building a, you know, a newsletter, building um, content around the product and how to use it, helpful uh, health tips, um, you know, and really uh, fine tuning it. So we uh, then end up bringing out two more SKUs, a beef bone broth and a fish bone broth um, in 2018. So um, it then started our you know journey into the supermarket retail world. Very nice. Yeah, we we were the opposite. We launched in retail first because that's just the game we knew. Um, you know, we launched the same time you did, 2016, 2017. So we it wasn't until the pandemic hit that we really was like, oh, we need a new pillar of business because no one's going to the store right now. So that's when we launched D2C. And I'm right there with you. Like, I wish we would have reversed it because we're learning that the people that we talk to on a daily basis, we learn about their lives and they share their testimonies. I mean, we'll get, I now get text messages from customers and, you know, we'll get emails and phone calls and a lot of them just call to say, Hey, how are you guys doing? And it has less to do about the brand of the product now. And those are the ones that are, you know, become advocates and they're sharing with it and basically free salespeople and marketing people. Um, so it's that part's been amazing. And then you get the data from the direct consumer standpoint that you don't really get in retail or Amazon. So that, I, you know, I think that's a, a great way. And then, and again, as you grow, retail is great because now you're uh, giving new consumers an opportunity to find you. And then if they want in bulk then you go to DTC. So um, what is, is, did you kind of find that same thing that, you know, you're becoming some of your customers are becoming more of like friends and like almost family to the, to the product and the brand? A hundred percent. Yeah. So we, you know, in uh, both and actually retail and direct to consumer. So we um, had, you know, so we got into specialty food stores to start with uh, around, so we're, on, we're based in Boston and so we're around the greater Boston area um, specialty stores and, and found a lot of them actually very supportive of, of brands um, helping you know local products get into the, to the store shelf. And, and that's a learning, you know, that, that was more of a learning experience for me is the whole retail business side of the business to distribution and all that. So that, that took a while. Um, and it was always on my checklist to get into Whole Foods. And so, you know, I started that process very early on. It took, you know, close to a year um, to get in. Um, but they've been, you know, super supportive of the brand and you know, working with them you know, uh, and, and helping local brands, um, uh, in terms of customers, right. So we, we, you know, once we got into stores, people would email us and get, you know, to say how they're using it. That was always kind of my thing. And that's actually how the five ways kind of comes about oh, okay. ways of using the broth. So we learned about people using it for smoothies and, um, you know, drinking it like a tea, putting different add-ins and so making it spicy or sweet or savory, um, you know, we learned of, of people, you know, not just cooking with it, but for many other, you know, other ways. Um, and, and really also learning that people uh, would use it for health reasons. So if you had a, a health issue, you know, stomach gut issue, um, going through a chronic illness, um, you know, bone broth is a, is a great um, way of, of healing. And um, not, you know, not just from us saying it, it's, there's a lot of scientific and um, studies on that of, of, of the nutrients found in broth um, and broth done the right way, which is simmering for a long time. You pulling out nutrients from, from the bones. Um, and the other thing that we did from, you know, customer feedback was people wanted a seafood broth, you know, being here in New England. Um, and, and that was actually kind of funny because I did, you know, I, I didn't have a lot of experience with a seafood broth. I never made one at home. Um, and everyone seemed to want a lobster broth. And so I spent a whole bunch of time researching that. And because it's a shellfish allergen, um, really came into a head wall of actually making that. Um, so we make our own product and our own production facility. And uh, kind of just coincidentally knew someone that had a, a small fish processing place and mentioned this idea around lobster broth. He said, well, why don't you make a seafood one? And, and, and got started on that and, and learned through that process, kind of all this uh, waste that goes on with um, with fish, seafood, 
So, um, you know, after the fish has been filleted, you know, whether you're buying a cod or haddock or what have you uh, at, the, at the seafood counter, um, you know, what happened to the whole fish? So uh, very often we learned about the uh, waste that goes on uh, of the whole fish. So after it's been filleted, you know, there's a, a lot of uh, waste that goes on. And we would take the, um, they're called racks, you know, the nose to the tail after it's been filleted and use that to make fish bone broth. Um, and that really came about solely from customer feedback and you know, looking for a seafood broth. Yeah, I'd, I'd never heard of a seafood uh, broth, so I like that. I'll have to give that a shot. And, you know, you, you mentioned the five-way uh, branding that, you know, that's really where my um, passion and um, experience is, is in marketing and branding. And I, I think that's great. A, a lot of things that you don't realize is, when it comes to products, like other ways you can use them, you know, right. again, from a, again, this, you know, my, my perspective of bone broth is you use it for mainly cooking. Uh, but there's all, all kinds of other ways to, to utilize it. So I think that's a, a great brand, great brand name and so much opportunity to tell the, tell the story of it from uh, what the consumer's doing or what the fans are doing with it. Yeah, hundred percent. I think, you know, I think that's, you know, when you lose, so as we grow our retail footprint, you do lose some of that because, you know, unless, you know, you don't, you know, because we lose kind of t touch with the customers, but, you know, through social media, through contacting us and, um, and then really, you know, from day one, trying to create that, you know, I call stickiness where, you know, we're sending out newsletters and it's not the newsletter just to buy the product, but here's like new recipe ideas and, Here's health you know, tips, information, nutritional information, um, and really making, um, you know, creating a brand that's giving customers more than just the bottle. Nice. What's next? Uh, you know, I've got, it looks like you've got um, multiple SKUs, uh, multiple, um, you know, flavors here. What are, are you going into? something you have new innovation you're gonna kind of keep riding this um you know is it is, or are you just focused on retail expansion or just what, what's that next step for you sure yeah so a little bit of both we want to keep expanding the store footprints getting into more national distribution um the other thing we started doing it kind of as the covid was happening we um we're doing a little bit in food service and so then that completely went away. Unfortunately, that was a major um, downturn, uh, but it, that's come back, you know, so we have accounts that have been, um, you know, using it for, for, you know, you know in a, in a uh, schools and hospitals and universities that use it to make um, dishes. So food service is an area we see of, of uh, growth for, for this year. And then as we go forward into next year. Amazing. Uh, you know, again, I keep saying that this game is not easy. So what is it that, A, keeps you, you know, self-motivated? Um, obviously, there's a responsibility to the business side of it. But, you know, it's, it is a grind. You know, it's, it's def definitely a roller coaster of highs and lows. And what's, uh, what, what are some of those just, you know, daily things that, whether it's checklist or, you know, your mission that you're staying uh, true to, what's, what's keeping you going, uh, you know, five years later? Yeah, it's definitely um, a challenging business, I think, running a food company. Um, uh, you know, and I think that the kind of mark line for, for me as the entrepreneur is kind of pre-COVID, post-COVID um, world, um, you know, we're now in, in the post COVID world, um, you know, the su supply chain shortages for packaging, um, you know, labor issues, you know, getting finding labor. So, uh, it's been really a challenging, I think the last, especially the last year of, of running the business, things that, you know, that we never had to deal with, you know, getting produce, uh, for one, um, where that was never, um, a challenge before. Uh, so things that we, so it's gotten a lot harder, I'll, I'll just say, uh, but I think staying true to the mission of helping, you know, our customers just really having a healthy product, um, has been, you know, uh, you know, that's been, you know, helping sustain me as the entrepreneur to keep it going. Um, and I think, you know, having, 
the value in the, of the brands, you know, really of, of having that um, out there and, and building it um, has been been a great driver, though the the the, the challenges, you know, new ones that we didn't think of keep popping up all the time. So it's it's definitely, uh, you know, where it's it's it does make a for a small business owner um, hard, <laughs> put it that way. <laughs> I agree. It, it- Hopefully you'll find comfort in knowing that you're not alone. I mean, oh, whether right. it's yeah. Hello Water or you name it, all the bullet points you just shared, we're all you know in the same boats, uh, whether it's LTL logistics or packaging or uh, resourcing, um, shipping. Shipping is just, you know, it, it's it, it's crazy. It's insane trying to ship right now. Right. Uh, and, but we're, you know, again, we're just trying to be a solution and create you know, yourself, just creating next generation, better for you products. And what I love about this community is we're also willing to help each other. It's not as cutthroat as it might look from the outside. Yeah. We're taking on the behemoths and, you know, you know, uh, they own most of the real estate and some of these uh, retailers, but it, we are creating what's next. And I, and that's what I love about these conversations and just hearing, you know, why we started it and what, whether it was our kids or, you know, our own personal health reasons. But uh, so kudos to that, you know, I'm proud of anybody who can, you know, take that leap, especially from, I'm sure you had a great tech job that uh, <laughs> paid, was paying some good bills. And now we're like, all right, let's go, uh, let's go do this. That sounds like a good idea. hundred percent. Right. But no, yeah, I think you're right. It's great having this, you know, the podcast and the community. And I definitely, you know, know of a lot of other entrepreneurial uh, pers- people that are you know with their own food brands. It is a very you know uh, helping community. I think it's you know definitely during these last year or so with with um, you know all the challenges. It's definitely you know that shows out. Um, and I also feel like you know the the um, the change that we're trying to bring. You know where it's not the big established brands. Um, you know we're we're doing something much more mission driven and, and focused. Um, and I think people, you know, appreciate that and, and, uh, our customers do, and it definitely helps, uh, sustain on those, uh, dark days. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> folks don't show up and, you know, or folks don't show up. You have to do, you know, you have to roll up your sleeves and do things yourself. Yep. Every day, every day. Yeah, well, obviously exactly. it's, uh, you know, being a entrepreneur podcast, what, what's something that you would have, a told yourself six years ago when getting into this that you knew today, uh, you know what's that that nugget that you know an entrepreneur may watch and say, oh, well these both both these guys you know they're they're figuring it out as they go, but uh, if I would have known that one thing or the, that that uh, just a little bit smarter in that one area, what would that be? Yeah, yeah I think um, well I I. I... I don't regret anything I've done. I think it's really you want to follow your passion. I think it's the the more regret is that you wished you'd follow, followed it. You know where you had an idea for something and you you wished that you have um, you know you wished you jumped in and did it. So I think um, not to be fearful of taking the risk. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong in in, in jumping in. Um, nothing wrong in failing. You know, it's it's you know it's it's really worth following that that passion that you have. Um, I think, you know, looking back of things I would have done differently, I think, you know, I, I don't, I, I, I think, you know, you can always wish you've, you know, turned left and right, um, things like that. But I, I think, you know, it all, it all in the end of the day comes through learning, you know, there's things that we did that helped us down the road that you know, we learned from. Um, so I, I don't think there's a right way of doing something. I think there's a way of just, just doing it. You know, I think don't be fearful to, to, to jump in, to do it, um, do things reasonably. Um, and, and then I think the only, um, expectations, you know, I think, as I said in the beginning where I had this expectation of not selling a lot that first day. Um, and I think, you know, from that day forward is like, I really saying my expectations, you know, so, you know, we all want to sell truckloads of products, but maybe the expectation is to start with that first case, then a pallet, and then go on. You know, having set, I think, realistic expectations um, helps, I think, companies a lot. Uh, and especially given the, you know, the current challenging times of pricing and all that. And I think of helping, um, you know, around listening, you know, uh, both listening to your customers and employees. Uh, I think we all, you know, 
you know, we all think as the entrepreneur, we get on a mission, we, you know, we're willing to go 110% every day. But, um, you know, sometimes employees, you know, they have lives and, you know, knowing that whole, being that whole self that, you know, you take time off for yourself, take time off for your, for your family. Um, and, and the same with your employees, you know, giving them the time to, you know, to do things. So those are the kind of, um, I guess those are my only helpful, uh, oh, that's great. yeah, that's great advice. Yeah. I'll, I'll echo the, um, expectations you, again, you, you, you really have no idea how much time it takes to build these things, you know, not only just a quality product, cause I'm sure your first product wasn't what it is today. You know, it wasn't for us. And then just the community that you're building, it just takes time and it, it takes um, passionate people to help you build it and have the same, um, you know, passion for your mission and your, and your thought process and, and just trust you along the way. And then the customers, we've gotten so many testimonies that we didn't even fathom the product would help them with, you know, whether it's celiac disease or, you know, cancer patients. Like we didn't, we didn't think that we just thought, Hey, it's a prebiotic water. It's going to help curb your appetite. We'll talk about weight loss. And then now it's, you know, that's still on the conversation, but there's so much more that, you know, these better for you products do that you just don't even know until someone is able to enjoy your product and, and tell you about it and then hopefully share it with their friends and family. And it grows like that. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. I think this is we have realistic expectations. We all want the hockey stick growth. Um, you know, investors want to have that as well, but I think, you know, having, you know, life is peaks, peaks and valleys and having that perception, you know, perspective of, of things will, will go into valleys and, and knowing that you'll come back out again, um, you know, hopefully stronger. All the time. That's amazing. Well, we are, uh, we're definitely up in the Northeast. So I will, uh, when I'm up there next, I'll check out some five way broth. Uh, awesome. But John, thank you so much for joining the Mission Inspired podcast. I can't wait to share your story. Um, where can our listeners find you in store online? Um, come, you know, where can they say hello to you? Uh, if they got any questions about, you know, not only your world, but, uh, maybe, uh, the product itself. Sure. Yeah. Um, hit our website. Uh, all the stores are, are located there. We're, we're primarily in the Northeast, uh, of, of the U S and, uh, you can get us online, um, you know, through, through, uh, Amazon and other places. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Excellent. So that's five way. That's five way foods.com. You're on Amazon and you're in uh, local retailers in the Northeast. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, I can't wait to, you know, again, try the product and uh, maybe meet you out in the, the field somewhere uh, and see, uh, see what's next for five way foods. Great. Thanks. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Enjoy the day. <laughs>